Okay, boys and girls, and what we're going to be making today is good old-fashioned schnitzel. Or schnitzel, or wiener schnitzel, or wiener schnitzel, or all kinds of fun pronunciations. Okay, uh, for this one, we're going to need some pork, of course, or some people like veal. That is another name, but I can't remember right now. I even saw it, I've even seen it done with beef, which is not bad. It's sort of a chicken fried steak at that point, though, so... Now, uh, one of the mistakes that I think a lot of people make is an overcomplicated recipe. Okay, so what we're going to need is some pork, some oil, salt and pepper, and good old-fashioned dried Parmesan. Okay, now you're going to need a mallet of some sort. I've also got a, a zip-top bag here. We're going to use that to flatten everything out. Um, you're going, the whole point of schnitzel is that you get it about a quarter of an inch thick because you want to actually go in and fry this as quickly as possible so you don't have to worry about like the center being done or anything you want that like fried up as lickety split as possible so let's get the banging started okay um what we're going to do is we're going to take our pork chops or sorry inside round whatever and just place them gently inside the Ziploc bags. You don't really have to zip it, but hey. Okay, now. Basically, we're going to be, basically we're going to be pounding this out until it's about a quarter inch thickness. You don't want to get too aggressive. We don't want to like destroy it. Just go around it slowly. Oh, also, if you don't have a kitchen mallet like this, uh, oh, don't use this side, by the way. This will rip the bag apart. and it'll, This is for meat tenderizing. It actually sucks at that. Don't know why it's included. You want to use the nice soft spot. Uh, if you have a regular hammer, though, uh, you can actually take it and use it like this. You know, instead of using like the, the soft spot, you know, it's a small on a regular hammer. You just use the side like so. Now beating the meat like, <laughs> beating the meat, sorry about that. <laughs> Freudian slip. I'm sorry, but I'm um, hammering the pork. Mm, that doesn't sound good either. Hammering the pork, beating the meat. Okay, if you have like a better descriptive way of saying this without sounding uh, slightly perverted, leave that in the comment section because I'm not going to say anymore. Okay, now, doing this, there we go, to the pork has two effects. First, it makes it thinner so that it cooks faster, okay? Uh, the second one thing it does is it actually breaks up a lot of the connective tissue in the pork, so it actually makes it a little bit more tender. Um, traditionally, it was... You know, schnitzel, from what I understand, now I'm not German, so I, or Austrian, or any of those, I'm Scottish, Canadian Scottish, so, anyway, but from what I understand, traditionally it was whatever bits of meat were left over, it's sort of a, sort of a peasant dish, so they do this, it would, this would tenderize it a little bit, break some of the connecting tissues, and it would also cook faster so that you wouldn't have to use as much fuel. Also, because it cooks faster, it doesn't absorb as much grease, and it's good for like a lunch. You know, you wrap it in a napkin or whatever and send it off with your fellow down the coal mine. Okay, I think we're almost there. Remember, we want it nice and flat. No hills and valleys. Oh, also, putting it in the Ziploc bag. Oh, sorry, the Ziploc bag. We don't want any <laughs> unnecessary product placements. But um, what this does is keeps, this keeps things clean, honestly. This keeps stuff from just shooting all over the place. If you just did this on the table like this, there'd be like pork goose. Oh, <laughs> another slip. But there'd be um, uh, drippings. I'm getting all kinds of... Um, anyway, but there'd be all kinds of uh, mess to clean up. 
Now you might think this is beating a little too much. It's not. You also notice the surface area is increasing as I beat it. As I beat it. Okay, we're going to have to find another word. As I tenderize it? No. As I schnitzel it. There we go. As I schnitzel the pork. Okay, that sounds dirty too. This is just getting to be a, a whole thing, isn't it? Okay, anyway, as I uh, schnitzel the pork, you'll notice that the surface area is increasing. Which is okay. Okay, and that's... There we go. Yeah. Well, maybe a little bit more. Now, we're not pounding on this, but, you know, you're giving it a nice, you know, a nice firm whack. There you go. And look, nothing is wet. Nothing's got any debris on it. Nothing's got any, any, uh, well, it's not blood. It's not hemoglobin. I don't know what comes out of pork. But anyway, zip top bag, really good. Some people say put it between two pieces of, like, uh, parchment paper or something. No, no. If you put it in the bag and seal it up, you don't get any mess at all. Okay, I'm going to do the rest of this up, and we're going to adjourn back to the dipping. Okay, now this is where the cheese comes into play. Uh, we put some Parmesan in here. Eh, half a cup. Depends on how much schnitzel you're actually making. Now, remember, you can't reuse this, so try to go a little bit sparing. You could add more if you need to, but you can't take it away. This is once it's used, it's used, okay? Um, and then in another bowl, we're going to crack an egg. I know, pretty riveting stuff, eh? Okay, we crack our egg in there. Put that there. And we just give it a little, a little scramble. Okay, now, our, uh, <laughs> pounded pork. We're going to give that a look, good dousing with salt and pepper. Okay, we'll put that aside. Okay, and put pepper on. Remember, this is to taste, so if you really like pepper like I do, coat it. But if you don't like pepper, use less. Now, you might want to give this a few minutes to sit so that it can uh, properly marry. Okay. So we set up our little station like this. Now, you're going to want to have a frying pan or a skillet uh, with a fair bit of oil. Because remember, this is like making fried chicken or whatever. You're going to want to put in... Oh... Depending on the size, just give it. Again, you just want to make sure that you can get, you know, up the sides of the um, thing. You don't want to leave any, uh, whatchamacallit places on the sides. Bleh. Okay. So, what you would do, you take your pork, like so, dip it in the egg, like so, Kind of weird because this already smells good. And we dip it in the cheese. Now, I've seen a lot of other people try to do schnitzel, and what they do is way too complicated. They'll put like pork rinds and, and parmesan and almond dust. Like, seriously, you don't need all that. Okay, um, I'm going to fast forward over to the pan. You see this. You just want to make sure you get it completely covered in the cheese. That's what the eggs do. Okay, I'm going to fast forward over there so you guys can see. Okay, now. Let's take our pork and add it to the pan. Now, 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to fry it on one side, then we're going to turn it. Uh, it doesn't take very long. I should have the other one ready. Whoops. Now remember, always drop it against, away from yourself, because that'll keep the grease dripping that way. You don't want it to, to, to hit you. Okay, um, I'd say about three minutes aside. I'm going to spare you the details of just sitting there watching it, uh, but when it's ready to turn, I'll come back. Okay, as you can see, I've already put one. And we got that beautiful golden crust going on. And we're going to put the other one. Remember, put away from yourself. Now, this is about three minutes per side. And that's going to do the same. Cook it until it's golden on this side. And that should be done all the way through. Let's just fast forward that. You don't need to watch. And here we have it, done on both sides. Okay. Just flip this over. See? Beautiful. We put that on a plate. Now this is beautiful and delicious. And if you want it to, serve this with a bit of sauerkraut and sour cream. Of course, traditionally I hear they put parsley on it. Who knew? Well, anyway, um, as usual, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like the video and share it. Uh, if you have any dirty puns, I'd like to hear those too, so put them in the comment section. Uh, you have a great day and bon appetit.